Hello and welcome to episode two in the world's cheapest surf destinations. Today we're diving into a place that's been drawing the attention of the surfing world increasingly in the last few years. Famous for its world-class cobblestone right points, A-frame peaks, consistency, and that perfect laid-back Central American way of living. El Salvador also has a stupidly low cost of living, which means you can tap into some of this Central American gold on a shoestring. In this video, we're gonna be breaking down everything you need to know for budget surf travel in El Salvador. So first up, let's talk the important stuff. So the waves. Now, El Salvador has so many different waves across its coastline, it's ridiculous. But most of the focus is in and around the town of El Tunco. Now, El Tunco is a tiny little surf town and up and down the coast, there's countless different waves. Right in town, you've got El Sunzal, which is super fun, albeit a little fat right-hand point break. Very popular, does get crowded, but it's super long and it's good for basically, well, anyone. Across the channel, you've got Labocana. Labocana was the site of the ISA Games. Super fun A-frame peak. You've got like kind of a fat long right and a shorter punchy left. Really fun, really consistent and pretty powerful. Just 20 minutes down the road, you've got the world-class Punta Roca. So Punta Roca is the jewel in the crown of El Salvadorian surfing. It's where they have the CT nowadays and on its day, it's a world-class right point. Kind of like, I guess, comparisons have been drawn between there and J-Bay. It's a sick wave, racy, it's got bow sections, turn sections, air sections, everything. It does need a fairly solid swell to really get going. And as you'd expect, because of its popularity, it does get super crowded. Also, getting in and out is pretty tricky because the cobblestones are like the slipperiest rocks in the world. I don't even want to admit how many times I've slipped over and stacked it <laughs> getting in there. So the area has been dubbed Surf City by the government in an effort to kind of draw more surfers to the area and promote it as a world-class surf destination. And so far, you know, it's working. <laughs> Around the coast, you've got countless other waves. Check out El Zonte, Kilometer 59. Both are a slightly different take on the right-hand point break. Right-hand points are what you come here for and right-hand points are what you're gonna get. They're places to consider if you get bored of Sunzal and Punta Broca, but to be honest, you probably won't. So let's dive into some of the costs. First up, we've got flights. Like any trip, flights is a huge chunk of your trip cost. From North America, you can get to El Salvador pretty cheaply. The airport in El Salvador is actually closer to La Libertad and El Tunco than it is to San Salvador itself. So when you fly into San Salvador, you're only a 45 minute taxi away from the waves basically. So you can find flights from LA or from elsewhere in North America direct to San Salvador. I actually somehow found a ridiculously cheap flight from LA to San Salvador for like 35 US dollars. I don't know if it was a mistake fare or if Avianca run fares like that all the time, but I just saw it and I needed to get from LA to Central America, so I just booked it. Obviously, you can't find flights like that all the time. You can find return flights though for between 200 and 300 dollars, even cheaper if you're good at scoping out those flight deals. I'd recommend using Kayak or Skyscanner to find cheapest flights. I always find those two websites are just the cheapest. So getting around in El Salvador is pretty straightforward, especially if you're on a budget. There's plenty of buses that go between the major towns, so they're really easy and super, super cheap, as long as you don't mind being stuffed in with loads of other people and <laughs> trying to carry your board. So many times I've got the bus from El Tunco to Punta Roca, and I'm always like stuffed in holding my board. This one time I had to actually hang outside of the bus have my board on the outside and just have one arm around the metal bar and I was just hanging outside of the bus for 20 minutes because it was so crowded but it was pumping so I had to. So as soon as you get out the airport in San Salvador you're 45 minutes away from El Tunco. From here I'd recommend jumping on a local bus or you can arrange a taxi. I'd recommend doing this via your accommodation. Once you booked your accommodation, if you message them and arrange that pickup, it just makes it nice and easy so you don't have to faff around with the buses and stuff. Even if you are on a budget, it just makes it easier, especially if you've traveled on a long international flight beforehand. It should cost between 30 and 50 US dollars to get that transfer each way. So, you know, it's not too bad really. 
Alternatively, you can find the bus. If, if you ask somebody in the airport where to get the bus to La Libertad, they'll be able to point you in the right direction. Alternatively, Busbud or uh, Rome to Rio, both of those websites make it clear and easy to find the best bus routes. It also tells you the company, expected price, and the times. Buses in El Salvador cost next to nothing, so it's by far the cheapest way to get around. Once you're in El Tunco or La Libertad, once you're near those waves, there's a main road that runs along between all of them, and along there there's buses that come past frequently. I couldn't tell you the exact times because I don't think even the bus drivers know the exact <laughs> times. They just kind of come past every half an hour, so if you're just waiting by the roadside, you'll easily be able to get between El Zonte, El Tunco, La Libertad. And um, while it's not the best budget option, you can hire either a car or a moped. You can hire a car from the airport in San Salvador, or you can hire mopeds from some of the surf shops in town in El Tunco. The ones I've seen cost around $25 per day, so it's definitely not like Bali. It is fairly expensive, but if your budget can stretch to either a car or a moped, I definitely recommend it. This way you just have more flexibility in being able to go down to Punta Roca when it's pumping, head up to kilometer 59. You just have more wave scoping ability basically. So if you're with a few friends, it might be worth checking that out. For rental cars, I always use discovercars or rentalcars.com. I'll leave those both in the description. For food in El Salvador, you're in for a treat. The local grub pupusas are epic. They're basically like these savory pancakes. You can fill them with like cheese, chicken, veg, anything you want basically. They cost a dollar a piece. And yes, you can eat four or five of them and class that as your meal. That's what I do between surfs. I would eat pupusas basically for lunch and dinner every single day. Alternatively, there's heaps of other restaurants in and around El Tunco. Yeah, you can eat Mexican food, you can eat seafood, Salvadorian food pizza, burgers, every, everything you want really. Typically, I've found I spend around between five and $10 per day on food. If you can get your breakfast included in your accommodation, you've only then got to pay for two more meals or you know, some people only eat two meals per day. So if you eat pupusas twice a day at $5 for five of them, you know, that's more than enough food for, for anyone. So yeah, if you're on a budget, I definitely recommend just eat, digging into the pupusas. Beers are also super cheap and you can grab cold cans of the local brew for like a dollar or two. Um, there's a few small supermarkets in, in El Tunco that you can just grab cans from and buy them by the can. So yeah, that's super cheap. Um, I would recommend avoiding buying the beers in the bars just because of the markup. You know, if you're gonna go for a night out, you're gonna be paying like three or four times the amount just for the same thing. So you know, if you can eat, drink those cheap drinks before you go out, I'd yeah, recommend doing that. So where to stay? By far the best place to stay for surfing in El Salvador is El Tunco. El Tunco is kind of like a little bubble town. It kind of feels separate from the rest of the country. So it feels safe, it's clean, they've got security on the gates and you can walk around there freely and not have any trouble, whereas I felt in La Libertad or elsewhere in the country I didn't feel as safe, especially in the city in San Salvador. Stay in El Tunco, wicked little bubble town. El Tunco also has like the nicest range of accommodation. So you've got like your more luxurious surf camps and private rooms, but there's also heaps of cheap places to stay. So weirdly, I couldn't find too many places on booking.com or Hostel World that were really cheap. However, if you're on a budget, I'd highly recommend Papaya Lodge. Now Papaya Lodge is a wicked place to stay. It's located right in the middle of everything. Like next door, you've got a small supermarket. The other side, you've got restaurants, bars, and the main street. You walk down that to get to the waves. You've got Sunzal to the right, Bocana to your left. And it's just got everything right there and then. Now, Papaya has both private and dorm rooms. Private rooms, I think, are around $25 per night, whereas dorm rooms are $15 per night, including breakfast, which, if you ask me, that's pretty good. You've got a pool, you've got super friendly staff, you will have to brush up on your Spanish though, <laughs> and you can just walk to everything. So yeah, I'll leave the link in the description where you can book Papaya Lodge. Otherwise, there's a few other places in town that you can walk to. There's some other cheap hostels, but I couldn't find them online for some reason. So your best bet is to probably go there, and if you don't like it, you've got other options. You can just walk around town and, and ask. So I just want to interrupt this video quickly to let you know of a free online course I've created. The course just details everything I do to make surf trips happen, from choosing accommodation, budget travel tips, saving money, spending money overseas, earning money online. 
It just tells you a few of the things that I do to make all of these trips happen. I love that you guys watch me go to all these places, but something I wanna do on this channel is show you guys how to do things as well. So I'll leave the link in the description. You just gotta sign up and then you'll have access to all the content. So enjoy that, but for now, let's get on with the video tips and tricks for surfing in El Salvador. Like anywhere, you've got the locals. Now, saw some like surf rage in El Salvador, especially at Punta Roca. The other spots were completely fine, but obviously that there, there are local surfers who do surf really good. They do kind of rule the roost at a lot of the better spots. So try and identify them, let them get their ways, respect the locals as always. Spots here are crowded as well, so you might find that pretty frustrating, um, but it's just part and parcel of surfing here. It's just what you gotta do. So yeah, just be respectful of the locals. As you'd expect, the heat in El Salvador is freaking intense. I mean, it's so, so hot. If you're surfing any time past 9 a.m., the heat is blistering, so you've gotta have the full sun protection set up. I'd recommend, yeah, full face of zinc, surf hat, brashy, yeah, all that kind of setup. Definitely important, drinking lots of water, staying hydrated, and yeah, that will help you not feel as drained. Also, because you're probably gonna be walking around town barefoot most of the time, well, I do at least, just watch out for things like rubbish, broken glass that can be lying around in the street. El Tunco does a pretty good job of cleaning up after itself. They have cleaners every single morning that sweep the streets and get all the broken glass and stuff up, but yeah, just a pair of thongs or sandals will be, will be probably the better option. But if you're going for a surf, yeah, just, just bear in mind, be careful of that. Because outside of El Tunco, there's a lot of rubbish. It's really dirty. And the last thing you want to do is cut your foot right as you're about to walk out to pumping right point breaks. The other thing is the transport. So obviously the buses, like I said before, are super, super crowded. As I said, I've been hanging out of buses like a couple of times, which is, yeah, just as sketchy as it sounds. So if you're not comfortable doing that, probably the, the buses probably aren't the best thing to do, especially with a surfboard. So some money saving tips. I always use Wise when I'm traveling abroad. Now Wise is like a bank card that allows you to have different bank accounts in different currencies. So it makes it super easy to transfer money to other people. And there's no foreign transaction fees when you put your card into an ATM. Bear in mind though that in El Tunco, to withdraw money out, there will be like a surcharge for most of the ATMs. I think it's mostly $2.50 or maybe $5. So it's a pretty annoying additional cost, but it's just something you have to cop. When you're eating at the local places, you're gonna have to pay cash. For taxis, you're gonna have to pay cash. For buses, you're gonna have to pay cash. There are places you can pay card in town, like at the more expensive restaurants. But if you're on a budget, you wanna be paying with cash. So always check that your bank doesn't have any fees when you're using your card overseas. Otherwise, download Wise and you can eliminate any of that extra cost. I'll leave the link to WiseCard down in the description so you can check that out. Um, so one of the ways I've been able to change my life basically when it comes to budget surf travel is being able to earn money online. Nowadays, I do so many different things. Like I do copywriting, I do web design, obviously make videos. So check out my full breakdown of the best surf jobs up there. Otherwise, a good way to get started and earn money whilst you're traveling is by teaching English online. If you're a native English speaker, you can sign up to a few different companies that connect you with students. They'll call you, you have a conversation, you help them learn English. One of the best companies I've found to get started with is called Cambly. You don't need any experience. You don't need any qualifications. You've just got to make an introductory video. And if you get accepted, you can get started right away. You'll earn around $8 US per hour, which doesn't sound great, but in El Salvador, that can go a hell of a long way. So I'll leave the link in the description where you can sign up to Cambly. So yeah, let's summarize things. So a total cost breakdown of one week's budget surf trip to El Salvador. So you've got your flight. So let's say that's $200 return from Los Angeles. Let's say you stay in a dorm room at Papaya Lodge for $15 per night, including breakfast. Then let's say you spend between 10 and $15 on food per day. So let's round that up to the same cost again. And then your taxi transfer from the airport to El Tunco, $30 each way, so that's $60. So that leaves us with a total of between $400 and $500 with a bit of leeway. If you budget that, you've definitely covered for a week of surfing in El Salvador. You can definitely do it a lot cheaper as well, you know, if you cook your own food, if you're not drinking, if you find somewhere cheaper to stay, if you only use the buses. 
So yeah, it is what you make of it. Please use that price breakdown only as a guide. I'm going off my own personal experience and research online. But as you know, prices can always change. So yeah, there we have it. That concludes our budget surf trip breakdown of El Salvador. I hope you found this video helpful. Please like and subscribe if you did. If you've got any questions regarding surfing in El Salvador or traveling on a budget, please let me know in the comments. I'd love to help you out. But for now, it's goodbye from me and I'll see you in the next episode.